consider the world with its population of close to 6 billion and another 10, 15, 20 billion devices, the vision that I've always had for Juniper is that uh, I want my company to build the infrastructure that connects the world together. I was always interested in the sciences, as long as I can remember. When I was little, I remember actually building things with my hands all the time. So that desire to learn was there from very early on. At the University of Hawaii, there were two projects which were phenomenally interesting. One was the Aloha Network, which was the precursor to Ethernet. The second project was a computer called the BCC 500. And so that's the place I actually got to learn how to program. I learned about computer systems. I also learned about networking. All of the things I learned there actually have been applied later. And some of the things that I learned there are starting to be applied now, which is completely fascinating. What actually got me started down this path was a frustration of having worked at Park for a long time, having had a lot of ideas, but not having had those ideas go out as products that would actually affect people directly. Because having been at Sun Microsystems for three years, I, I knew instinctively that the best vehicle available to actually get ideas out to the marketplace was a startup. The question was, what was the field? So the idea that something very interesting was happening in the wide area network and that the network was completely underserved with respect to the equipment was crystal clear to anybody who was willing to look in 1995. The innovation that Juniper did primarily was to recognize that in order for the network to grow exponentially, we had to actually change the way, not the functionality of the routers, but the way they were implemented. And Juniper came in, fortunately, with a technology. We broke new ground in the architecture of how routers are built. And today, every router is built that way. And if there's one thing I've learned about networks and networking technology, is that silos are bad because they rob the network of the key value that it can provide, which is its any-to-any -any connectivity, the, this ability to connect anything or anyone to anything or anyone else. We need to bring innovation to networks. The only way to do that is to provide an open software ecosystem where not only Juniper's 7,500 employees are working to increase the value of the network, but people everywhere. Uh, and the best example I know that, that you know, most people would recognize is an example of Apple's App Store, where anyone can write an application relatively easily and quickly. Apple wins and the individual wins, and, and most surely, the end user wins because of the fact that there's a lot more innovation that is happening in the ecosystem. So that model needs to be brought to the network, and Juniper is the company that is going to do that. The role that information technology has to play is essentially to make human beings much more capable in achieving the things that they want to achieve. So think about the network and information technology infrastructure that we are building as being the cerebral cortex of planet Earth, because that's really what it is. So literally this network that would allow any information processing system to be connected, the possibilities are really limitless. And the power of what society can achieve when connected in this powerful way is absolutely incredible. I don't know what the bounds are. Uh, I just know that, that it can be very, very powerful.